Greetings, my fellow from Low Seven Thinkers. This is L3 with Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida. And today's date is Sunday, November 19, 2017. Yeah, it looks like everyone's going to be heading out, getting ready for the Thanksgiving weekend. Whatever you do, if you got to fly, avoid the bias scanners, opt out, and have deplorable body odor. Let the TSA agents work for their money, okay? Trust me, you won't regret it, and I won't slander. They won't like it, but who the hell cares? Interesting news, I just found this out, came out up three days ago, that um, Leonard Posner wanted to sue Wolfgang Hal- Halbig in the Lake County courts in Florida pertaining to Sandy Hook. And what has happened, the case got dismissed without prejudice. And I'm going to add that link to it. It's um, with, the, with the dockets and all that. It's really exciting. I know Wolfgang Howell Big was being ridiculed, humiliated. They try to make him look like he's a piece of garbage, conspiracy nut over Sandy Hook. But he stuck to his guns. You got to commend a man for that. And I know some of the so-called alternative media gave him the shunned him, which is completely unacceptable. Because people got to realize one thing. They want to take away your natural-born rights to defend yourselves, use the correct tools, proper tools to defend yourselves, your families, and loved ones over all forms of tyranny. So I'm going to add that to my footnotes out of homage. And I did email, I did send that tweet to the Miami Herald, Palm Beach Post, and the Sun Sentinel. Please, will you folks respond to that? And you got the link for the dockets. You can read them yourselves. I'll come out and see these journalists, going, mainstream journalists going out there. I forgot they're, they bend over for the establishment. Many of them. Not all, but many of them. I'll be very sincere. Yeah, right now I'm just along the New River, Fort Lauderdale. Very pleasant. High 60s, low 70s. Sunday night. And I'm just chilling here by the chilling here by the bench. Doing the show just for you. Alright, without further ado, I'm gonna hit it off. Something that's really interesting that's been happening in Israel. Or the West Bank is pertaining to prophets from the Bible times and history, and it happened with Joseph as well. And uh, it's coming press for came from the press TV. And I opened my eyes here. Go, right, Israeli settlers desecrate Jonah too in occupied West Bank. And you see the photos here. They're being escorted by Israeli security forces. Yep, New World Order Uncle Tom's, I would say. So let's just read what it has to say. Hundreds of Israeli settlers have formed a storm Jonah's tomb north of the southern occupied West Bank city of Al Khalil, which is Hebron, desecrating the site, venerated by Jews, Christians, and Muslims. That means they show respect for this for this individual, the prophet. Because Regardless, Judaism, Christianity, and and Islam came from the same, like, areas from the Abrahamic viewpoint. Not in its entirety, but common interest. Now we'll proceed. Over 300 ultra-Orthodox men, mostly from the Breslov Hasidic set, arrive at the site in Halhu City, located 5 kilometers or 3.1 miles north of Al Khalil, Khalil board on a number of buses early on Sunday and broke into the tomb amid protection by Israeli troops. Arabic language Safa News Agency reported. Israeli forces has deployed several military vehicles on the streets, leading to Jonah's tomb and snipers were positioned on rooftops overlooking the area. Clashes erupted when young Palestinian men started hurling stones and empty bo- and empty bottles 
at Israeli troopers and settlers. Israeli soldiers in return fired rubber-coated steel bullets, stun grenades, and tear gas canisters to disperse the crowd. No injuries were reported. Meanwhile, more than a hundred Israeli extremist settlers and religious students have stormed the Al As Asko Ask Ak Squas. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Akusa Mosque compound and in the Israeli occupied old city of East Jerusalem's El Quds. On Sunday morning, a total of 102 people forced their way into the holy site through the Bab al Magaraba under tight protection of several groups of Israeli soldiers and special police forces. The settlers performed as deemed provocative by Palestinians, some of them toward the mosque courtyard, while the rest converged near the Golden Gate, also known as the Gate of Mercy, on the eastern flank of the mosque, and read Talmud verses out loud. The occupied Palestinian territories have witnessed new tensions over since Israeli forces introduced restrictions on the entry of Palestinian worshippers in the al Aqusa Mosque compound in East Jerusalem, Al Quds, in August 2015. Some 300 Palestinians have lost their lives at the hands of Israeli forces in the tensions since the beginning of October 2015. The Tel Aviv regime has tried to change the demographic makeup of Jerusalem, Al Quds, over the past decades by constructing illegal settlements, destroying historical sites, and expelling the local Palestinian population. Palestinians say the Israeli measures are aimed at paving the way of the Judaization of the city. The Al Aqsa Mosque compound is a flashpoint Islamic site, which also holy to the Jews. The mosque is Islam's third holiest site after the Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia. Very interesting here because a lot of people are infuriated, regardless of their creed, even on their comments. Because even I say United Muslims, he wrote here Jonah and the whale in three days in the sea. How disgusting are the Jew terrorists attacking a prophet of all religion too, which we all read story of Jonah and the whale. So it tells you something, okay, on um, what is happening and. Um, and PP said, a first safe Jewish homeland was established many years ago and exists to this day, named Berberazan in East Russia. All Khazarian settlers living in Palestine are welcome to make Berberazan at their home and reside there in peace. It was established by Russia for Jews as a safe homeland for them many years ago. There is no reason for the for Khazarian settlers to occupy um, Palestine. Google it. Berberazan or Berberazan Jewish Autonomous Oblast, Oblast, Russia. And of course, Shazia said here, totally disgusting. If they have no respect for a prophet, they should they then they surely are devils, not humans. So it's just it tells you a lot of people are pretty damn infuriated, regardless if they're if you're Judaic, Christian, or it Muslim. When it comes to the prophets, they respect it. And I'm going to add a little story to this by ThoughtCo.com on Jonah the, and the Whale, a Bible story summary. And you can read this yourselves and have the scriptures in there as well. Just multiple books of information to get you people thinking why this is considered sacred to a lot of these folks. And you have individuals that claim to be Jewish but according to the book of Revelations chapter 2 and 3 verse 9 talks about the Jews that are impersonating or fake Jews or they think they claim to be Jews in disguise or jack lanterns as the synagogues of Satan so what you're seeing right now they can be they can't represent 
that particular click is completely unacceptable in my view and a lot of controversies too with the Talmud lots of it claims a lot of uh, you could say satanic verses in that particular particular uh, um, books the book and the multiple books of the Talmud and you can't call me any Semitic because it pissed off people that are Jewish by faith as well it's a real shame when you have parasites trying to destroy heritage and culture We're probably a bunch of Marxist bastards for all we know it's like when they talk about when they want to remove the, the confederate statues they call them racists and they own slaves in a different perspective it's the censoring See, that's part of what the New World Order wants. Destroy heritage, culture, culture, and individualism. They want a one world religion. And I believe this particular group could be the synagogue of St. Breslov Hasidic sect, 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 can be part of the New World Order plan pawns of the game and that is very dangerous for that particular region something to always look at my friends this is why an individual like myself hate these certain organizations trying to influence my livelihood my freedoms and try to tell the country I live in how to think and wipe my butt. The hell with them. So I'm going to add that for sure. You can folks to read yourself because I'm saying this out of fairness. And speaking of Israelis, Richard just came out in the Jerez. I hope I pronounced that right. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah. Haaretz, Israeli newspaper, and this is by Gideon Levy. Levy, have Israelis forgotten how to be Jews? Interesting question. Israel has never made clear whether its Jewish identity is a matter of national or religious identity, but that will change once we achieve equality. What if Labour Party leader Avi Gabi is right and we really have forgotten how to be Jews what would that be so terrible maybe it would even be better Gabby directed the worst possible accusations against his own political camp we've forgotten our Jewish identity which is maybe even worse than forgotten how to be a Zionist it's the end of the world but you can be a great person and even an outstanding Israeli while forgetting a little Jewish identity when no one has any idea what's the significance of being a Jew in Israel 2017, just which Jewish values is Gabby is talking about? If doubtful, he knows. What's so essential to remember and what can we forget? Such a discussion is meaningless. If being Jewish means a sense of belonging to a chosen people that allows to do anything it wishes, Liberals must forget that aspect of their Jewish identity. If being Jewish means keeping religious customs, secular Jews must forget their Jewishness. If being Jewish means a perpetual victim and thinking your people isn't only history's biggest victim, but also the one and only victim as a result, can do whatever it wants. We must free ourselves from such a Jewish identity. If being Jewish means thinking that Hebron is yours, that Abraham, your periok, wandered, wandered around there in ancient times and bought a cave there, the left wing is an only a tile, but is required to forget about being Jewish. If being Jewish means feeling an autonomic infinity, infinity to be unenlightened Brooklyn rabbi or a corrupt LA billionaire just because they're Jewish, over a non-Jewish Israeli from Kafir 
cure, cure some. A bit of Jewish identity can be ignored. If being Jewish means allowing the offspring of a possibly Jewish grandmother the right to his really citizenship, but not someone whose family has been in the country for generations is immoral to cling to such an identity. When people talk about a Jewish state, it's impossible to know what they mean. It is a character determined by a statistical majority in the population registry, a state governed by Jewish religious law. It is Jewish if there is no public transportation on Shabbat and no grocery stores are open then. And not if there is civil marriage and burial. It is Jewish if maintenance on the railway system is done on Shabbat by non-Jews, but not if it's done by Jews. That's the question. Israel has never made clear whether its Jewish identity is a matter of a national or religious identity. If it's a religion, what do secular Israelis have to do with it? If it's nationality, what's Israeli identity? Secular Israelis can forget a bit about the Jewish identities, particularly if its significance is fuzzy. They can't find they can't find their values from the storehouse of universal values, just as people in other countries do. And they can find their identities at a clearer address, being Israeli. I'm an Israeli, sometimes proud, sometimes ashamed, but always Israeli. I'm a son of Jewish refugees who fled here for their lives, and it's reasonable to assume that we're not, we're not for the dangers they faced in Europe. They probably would have stayed there and assimilated. There is no need to sever oneself from roots and wipe out the past, but the present and future are a lot more important. What society knows so little about its present and even less about its future. Divorced from reality and living in dumbfounding denial. Studying the past is secondary. Before Israeli students learn about Joshua, conquest of the land of Israel, they should learn a little about the Jewish, the Israeli army conquest, but they and their parents have chosen not to know. The slogan, we are Jews, needs to be updated. There is a Jewish world that is dealing with its own issues, largely divorced from the issues that we in Israel are concerned with. The controversy over Aglianton prayer at the Western Wall interests very few Israelis, as does the issue of conversion. On the other hand, the submarine affair that the police are investigating interests very few Jews abroad. This gap will only grow. As long as the system of government is changed, Israel will remain open to any Jew who wishes to immigrate here. This person will gradually become an Israeli, a process that happens to immigrants in every country. That will be the case until the day when members of both people, Hebrew, Arab, Jewish, and Palestinian, live here in equality. When they all, when they above all will be Israelis, whatever their country is called then. Interesting viewpoint. On what is happening so you gotta look at everything you know a lot more than what it is but something to look at I would say so um can I give you guys your intake sometimes it's always good to know your roots and your heritage I always believe in that but what's the main of us here a bunch of uh, mutts or high sevens we call it the Slang, but it's good to know all about that. You know the history, the heritage, and so forth. Regardless, you know, it's up to the Israelis if they still want to keep their roots across the board. Always got to watch their governments as well. All right, do one more here. It came out today as well. Activist Post. I think from Free, Th- Free Thought Project originally. Let me find out. Let's check this out. I believe it's by Rachel Bevins. Yep. Media silent as federal Fed committee quietly passes act allowing warrantless searches. As it reads here, it's been over a month since the latest dangerous piece of legislation meant to infringe on America's constitutional rights was introduced. And Congress is now moving forward with the bill that will have serious ramifications for all Americans by blatantly violating the freedoms guaranteed by the Fourth Amendment if it's become law. The USA Liberty Act has passed the House Judiciary Committee by a vote of 27 to 8. 
And as Congressman Justin Amish noted, all privacy advocates should be concerned about the overwhelming support the bill is receiving from Congress. The Liberty Act passed Committee 278. It allows the government to search our private data without a warrant in violation of the Fourth Amendment. Amish wrote on a Twitter, it's another bill like the Freedom Act that furthers violations of our rights under the guise of our protected right, protecting our rights. As Amish implied, the USA Liberty Act provides the opposite of liberty for Americans. Instead, the purpose of this bill is to reauthorize and create additional loopholes for Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, FISA, which is set to expire on December 31st, 2017. Amash also noted that USA Liberty Act is yet another piece of legislation that furthers violations of our rights under the guise of protecting our rights. Exactly. Like the Patriot Act. Be patriotic. Here's a penile microphone. He compared it to the USA Freedom Act, which was passed under the similar circumstances in June 2015. The judiciary, um, House Judiciary has also tried to use the USA Freedom Act as a reference to its success, claiming that the bill ending bulk collection of data, protecting civil liberties and national security, and provide robust oversight, oversight and transparency for our national vital national security tools. However, as the Free Thought Project reported in May 2015, USA Freedom Act doesn't actually end or suspend the phone records program, but simply requires phone companies to hold onto these records rather than the NSA. Oh, how astute of them, right? It also authorized for the first time the NSA, FBI, and other government agencies to unconstitutionally collect data in bulk on potentially millions of law-abiding Americans and let it, the NSA collect cell phone records in addition to the landline call records. See? All same crap, different package. Absolutely. Alright. Let me see here. As now, as Congress prepares to pass the USA Liberty Act, it claims the bill will better protect Americans' privacy by requiring the government to have a legitimate national security purpose before searching an individual's database. What a wet dream. I can dream about it. The government will make me feel safe. Exactly. And as I go along here, but... What the bill does not advertise is the fact that it does not actually address legitimate problems that exist with 702, Section 702. The FBI's legitimate national security purpose could be justified by just about any reason the agency chooses to give, and agencies will only need supervisory authority in order to search America's metadata. A week before the last vote, more than 40 organizations, including the American Civil Liberties Union and the Freedom of Press Foundation, joined together in a letter to the House Judiciary Committee condemning the USA Liberty Act. You can, link, you can check that link out for yourselves. The coalition noted that the bill fails to address concerns with a backdoor search loophole, which allows the government to conduct countless searches for information on individuals who are not targets of Section 702, including U.S. citizens and residents. The U.S. Liberty Act departs from the recommendation by the President's Review Group on Surveillance Appropriation Amendments that previously passed the House and urging uh, civil society organizations that would require a probable cause warrant prior to searching the Section 702 database for information about a U.S. citizen or resident absent narrow exceptions. As written, it raises several concerns. First, the bill most glaring deficiency is that it does not require a warrant to access content in cases where the primary purpose is to return foreign intelligence. This is an exception that threatened to swallow the rule. Sorry about that. A legislative an 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 um, analysis from Electronic Free Freedom Foundation noted that the USA Liberty Act does not institute adequate transparency and oversight measures. It does not deal with the misuse of the state secret privileges, privilege, which has been invoked to stave off lawsuits against mass surveillance. And most importantly, it will not curtail the NSA's practice of collecting data on innocent people. The science that surround the USA Liberty Act is nothing new. For the first time, the USA Patriot Act was passed on fear-based propaganda in 2001, the United States government has used trendy names 
such as freedom and liberty as an appeal, while working with the mainstream media to politicize any and every tragic attack in order to convince the American public that they must give up their liberties in order to ensure temporary security. And you know what uh, Tom, uh, Ben Franklin says? If you support that, you deserve neither. Plain and simple. So all you mainstream Uncle Toms and Angel Mamas and all you government douchebags, I'll give you my penile microphone because you're mumbling. It, and furthermore, it's not sexual harassment. I say stick it. The hell with them. Nothing more than treasonous garbage. Plain and simple. I recommend anyone in the United States to contact the congressman and the Senate. If they support it, tell them Adolf Hitler will be extremely proud. Especially people like Ted Deutsch. Okay? Well, hopefully, if he if he's against it, I will commend him. I'm real critical of that man as well. That's how you do it. Ridicule these parasites. Remember, your rights are natural born and the states can nullify. They did to the Patriot Act, 400 municipalities and 8 states. We can do it again. Don't be afraid. Action conquers fear. So hell with the USA Liberty Act is for treasonous, bend over bobs, and Uncle Toms and Angel Mamas, etc. Okay? I said my piece. Cool. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. And plus, feel free to download and share throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you're saying something that's interesting, you may want to check out. Whatever you do, please address your correspondence with the quorum. You can hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, Scene.Life, Minds.com, FutureNet.Club, Patreon.com forward slash LokiLuck3 with three eyes. If you want to be a donor, supporter, and all that, that would be awesome. You can hit me on Gab, Gab.ai, which is like a freer version of Twitter. In addition, you can email me at LokiLuck3 at gmail.com. Or to the encrypted ones, locally luck numbers 03 at protonmail.com. Okay, my friends, that's all for now. Once again, thank you for your time. But always remember that the maniac resistance self the so and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.